So I want to quickly go over the differences between a class and an object in C Sharp. So I have a brand new solution with a brand new project and it has nothing in it so I'm going to right click on it click add new project or new class and I'm going to call that class car and just like what Visual Studio normally does is it scaffolds out some code for my car class and I'm gonna go ahead and make my class public so it's accessible to other classes and inside of that car I'm gonna give it a few inside of that car class I'm gonna give it a few fields I'm gonna give it a string um, of I'm sorry a publicly accessible string of um, that's called make this will be um, like Ford, Chevy, Toyota. Another string of model and this will be like um, Durango, Ranger, um, the model of the car. And I'll probably give it a um, an age of a car I guess. Uh, how old it is purpose being I have these three fields in this one class public car I'm also gonna make a function inside of this class I'm gonna make it a public function and it's gonna return a um, an integer and I call this function size or get size and this is the pretty much the um, structure of what a class would have. You have some fields or some properties. These are fields. You have a function and my function needs to return something so I'm going to return the number one because it has returned an integer. And this is the basic makeup of a class. When my program's running and it just has this class that just kind of this car class over here that just kind of sits here it's still just defined as a class it's a blueprint for a car and in order to use it I've got to use it in a different uh, a different class so what I'm gonna do is this is pretty bad form but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another class inside of this same file. A lot of times people uh, discourage putting multiple classes in the same file. You can technically do it. And I'm going to call this one um, I'm going to call this one main. This is just the main class. And inside that main class I'm going to have a function that uh, it doesn't return anything and it's going to be called uh, main and probably because that's a constructor I'm going to get rid of the void so I have a function in my class I have a main class and a function in that main class and inside that function I'm gonna declare a new instance of car so notice I have a class here it's the main class I have a car class here the the car class starts right here with this open squiggly and then it closes right here the main class starts here and closes right here the main function in that class opens here and closes here they come in pairs and so inside of this main function I'm going to declare a new um, variable called my car and I'm going to set it equal to a new instance of car and what this is doing is it's declaring a one brand new instance of a car in fact I'm gonna call it my car one the minute this code runs right here the minute this code runs right here it's going to um, create a brand new 
um, object based off of that car class. So maybe I give this a little, this my variable name a little bit more definition. Maybe I call it a Toyota. And so now I have an instance of that car. And if I want to use Toyota as a variable, I can say my Toyota dot age. Well, my Toyota is five years old. And my Toyota dot, oops, Toyota dot model is um, Corolla. I have no idea how to spell Corolla. But the point here, and obviously the Toyota uh, make is uh, a Toyota. The point here is that I have one instance of a car class and I start to set its properties. And what I'm going to do is right below that, in the same main function, I'm going to declare a brand new another car. Var Ford equals new car. And I'm going to do the same thing. Ford dot age. This one's a brand new car. It's just one year old. Ford, my Ford car, my model of it is a, um, a Ranger. And the make of a Ford. equals Ford. Now you can easily see I have two car classes. I have one that I newed up or instantiated right here. And I have another car that I instantiated right here. The minute I start to instantiate a car class, I have Toyota becomes an object. It's no longer a blueprint of a car. It's an actual car. It's got an age, a model, a make. And the minute you instantiate a class, you start to refer to that variable that you've declared it as, as the object. So I have two um, cars. The Toyota is an object now, and the Ford is an object. And if you look up the definition of what an object is, a lot of times you'll see a simple explanation as an object is an instance of a class. It's not the class itself because I look up here on my car class and all I'm doing is defining a blueprint of a car. I'm just saying a car has a make, it has a model, it has an age. I'm not really setting those to anything. And just for the clarity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the function that I, I created. But I have this car class, it just defines something. This could have been a book. Um, this could be a person. But the minute I start to make a instance of that class, I have what's called an object. An object is an instance of a class. Toyota is an instance of a class that makes it an object. Ford is an instance of a class that makes it an object. It's the same thing. Let's really quickly, we'll change car to person. And instead of make, we have person's first name. And instead of model, we have a person's last name. And we'll leave age there because a person has an age. This is a class, public class. It starts here, ends here. It has three, prop, three fields inside of that class that helps describe what a person is, parts of a person, first name, last name, age. And then in my main class, I'm going to just have a function called main, and I'm going to create some objects based off of that class. So I'm going to delete what I've got. I'm going to say var Steve equals a new person. And I'm going to start setting some values on Steve. Steve's first name is Steve. Steve's last name is Kennedy. And Steve's age is 39 and holding. And it's an integer, so I can't have a string around it. It's a real number. Steve is now an object because it's an instantiation of a person. 
I'm going to put another person together. I'm going to put Tony. Tony is a person as well. Tony right here becomes an object because you instantiated Tony as a new person. And all of a sudden I can change Tony, the object Tony, separately than the object Steve. And just to show you, I'm going to change Tony's, I'm going to give Tony the last name of Smith. And Tony's age is 29 and holding. Oops, again, I accidentally made it a string. So now I have two instances of person. These are called objects. A class is not technically an object because it hasn't been instantiated. It's just a blueprint. It just describes what a person is. That's a class. The minute I start to use it in my program and new it up or instantiate it, it becomes an object. Steve is an object. Tony is an object. Person is not. Person is a class. It's just the blueprint. I hope that helps you understand the difference between what a class is and an instance of an object, an instance of that class called an object.